So I would like to compliment the lecture uh, regarding events from 2016. Uh, with some added slides and some some that are changed. So so s look at this uh, kind of lecture as an errata to 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 the 2016 lecture. If you're a Swedish student or Swedish speaking student, you can always look at the uh, 2017 uh, recording where this is covered. Uh, then you don't need this this one actually. Okay, so first of all, I've added, if you look at this list, I've, I've actually added uh, something called synthetic events or custom events uh, down at the bottom as an event type. Uh, synthetic events are quite powerful in, when you are creating web components. Uh, a synthetic event or a custom event is an event that you can create yourself and, and trigger. And this is really powerful when it comes to components because inside of a component uh, you would like that component to be able to, to, to tell something to, to the rest of the world or to the, to the ones using that component of that custom element. Um, and we will have a look at how to implement that. That is quite easy actually, um, but we will have a look. Uh, I've also skipped some things when it comes to what triggered the event. So, so we, we went through uh, that this inside an event handler, this will refer to the uh, element triggering the event. Uh, if you're using this anonymous functions. Um, however, there are ways to get around that. I'm not sure I talked about bind, so, so just, just a brief one about bind. If we are adding an event listener to A, like this, uh, that, that, that is marked is the usual way to do it with just an anonymous function. However, you can bind this anonymous function to another scope using bind and in this case we are binding this anonymous function to this. That means that inside of the anonymous function this will refer to whatever it says in the bind and if bind says this then this inside of the function will be the same thing as this outside of the function. So this is quite powerful when it comes to for instance adding event listeners inside of uh, an, an object uh, or an instance of, an, of a type. There is shorthand for doing this and, and that is the uh, arrow functions because arrow functions will do this automatically. So uh, an ar using an arrow function for an event listener like this it will automatically bind to the outer scope or to the scope in, in which the uh, event listener is, is, is set. Uh, so I would probably recommend to always use arrow functions when, when possible because this will behave as expected if you do. So a short note about that. Um, yeah, I've gone through that one and that one and that one. So let's go over to synthetics events or custom events. As I said, a custom event is something that you can, you can throw your own uh, events basically or trigger your own events. Uh, so if we are creating, for instance, my custom element, this is just a, an HTML element or a custom HTML element somewhere, and we want that element to, 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 uh, to throw an event, we could uh, use something called custom events. Uh, we do that by declaring with new, uh, creating a new instance of window.custom event. Uh, custom event is a type on the window object. However, in the code standard, uh, it says that you need to use window dot to express those kind of uh, built-in types. So that's why we have window dot. If, we, if it weren't for standard JS, we could skip window and just do custom event because custom event is built into the browser. Okay, as a first parameter, uh, we are uh, naming the event. In this case, I would like this event to be called sign up. So this is probably a component for users signing up on a web page. I name that custom event sign up so the user has signed up. Uh, as the second parameter, we could give a configuration object, and this is quite usual in newer APIs that you, instead of just adding 
parameters uh, and sending in arguments as uh, to configure uh, a type in the constructor. You just send in a config object and in this config object you can add all configuration needed. Of course there are more things you can do than this detail. You can add like bubbles, true or false to tell how, how the event should be uh, uh, propagate uh, through the DOM. Uh, in this case I've added the detail uh, uh, um, property and you can add whatever you like as a value to that detail property. You can add an, old, uh, an, uh, an object, an array or in this case just a value what the user probably wrote inside of a, a, a control in the, in, the, in the custom element. This, is, this object will be, uh, uh, you will, will be reachable when you when the event has triggered, uh, and I will show that soon. Uh, later on, when, when the user signs up, clicks a button or, or anything, and you, you are ready to dispatch the event or trigger the event, you can do that by the dispatch event method on your custom element. In this case, uh, I do a my custom element dot dispatch event, and I uh, dispatch my custom event that was created. So this will be triggered. If we look at it on the other side when using that custom element, uh, in this case I get a reference to the custom element in the HTML uh, and I'm adding an event listener as usual to the sign up. We would like to listen to sign up and this one is being called when the event is dispatched inside of the custom element. Uh, and we log the event.detail. So in detail we will get some information sent from the custom element. As I said, this is really powerful. Uh, we will look at it in, in the context of the BART board application that I've coded. Please go ahead and watch that demo, demo if you haven't or, or just do the assignment because or exercise because that will show a lot of things surrounding custom elements. So if we're going into that BART board, I've left out a lot of code, but just, just to, to show some things inside of this BART board, we have this connected callback that is uh, uh, overridden and this connected callback. Uh, in connected callback, it's good practice to add your event listener. So this one will, this one will be called when the element is added to the DOM. Uh, and in this case, I, I'm adding event listeners for uh, mouse down because when the user is doing a mouse down on the blackboard, we should start, start writing in this example. When the user is releasing, we should stop writing. And even if the user has, it, has the mouse button down and, and the mouse pointer leaves our blackboard, we should also stop writing. Uh, so I'm connecting my event listeners here and I'm removing them down at disconnected callback. So, so if, if, if this custom element is removed from the DOM, we're also removing all the uh, event listeners. That's just good practice. Uh, in this case, we're telling, when mouse down, we're calling for a function or a method on our uh, custom element called underscore on right. The underscore indicating that this is kind of a semi-private uh, method not supposed to directly call uh, on write. It's, 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 it's not private, but it's semi-private. Uh, the same for on stop writing uh, uh, in this case. We will not have a problem with this. Uh, we don't, do not need to use a bind because this is the scope for the event listener. And since this is the scope for event listener, this inside of stop writing will also point to this. So, so this will work fine. However, would you set this on another object inside or another element inside of your element, then you would probably do some binding in this case. Uh, in the on write, uh, so when we write, I'm, I'm doing a check, a quick check, just to see if if the if the board is flooded, if if we have written more letters than uh, is uh, there is room for inside of the BART board. In that case, I'm creating a new custom element uh, that says filled, and I'm di di dispatching that event. Uh, so my my BART board will throw an event called filled when when the BART board is full. Um, 
and then I will call stop writing and I will return because I don't do not want to do anything any more writing. Uh, and in outside we could do this. On our bot board we could add an event listener for filled and when it's filled we could like console log looks like the board is full maybe wipe. And in the example in the board board example you can have a look at this and then I will show how to do a, a, a wipe method as well and, and connecting, connecting it all together. That is basically it. Custom elements or synthetic elements are quite easy to handle, but they are a perfect match for custom elements. So please go ahead and use them.